So uh, in recent council meetings, a couple of questions arose from the council members about our Small Business Innovation Research Program, SBIR. And it occurred to us that it might be useful for council to get a report about the status of our SBIR and STTR programs. So here to give the presentation are Renee Ryder, Program Director in the Division of Genomic Medicine, and Ian Nova, Program Director in the Division of Genomic Sciences. Which one of you is going first? There's Ian. Ian is going to lead us off. Okay, thank you. Um, as introduced, today we're going to tell you about the small business program here at NHGRI. I'm going to start with an overview of small business funding across NIH, explain what a small business grant is, uh, who is eligible, and when and why you should apply. And then we're going to dive into the scientific areas that we focus on at NHGRI, provide a portfolio analysis and outlook for the future of our program. So NIH is congressionally mandated to spend 3.8% of the R&D budget on small businesses. This equates to 1.3 billion annually across the institutes and centers at the NIH. NIH has created a specific office called the Small Business Education and Entrepreneurial Development Office, or SEED office, to manage these programs across NIH. In addition, each IC has their own small business program that allocates funds in their mission space. At NHGRI, this equals 17.5 million annually. We use these funds to provide what's called seed funding, or early stage funding, to eligible small businesses in the form of small business grants. An eligible small, small business, as defined by Congress, is a for-profit company or organization with 500 or fewer employees. And I will note that we see this, the full range of number of employees and our applicants from ranging from one or few employee companies all the way up to larger numbers. The company must, be, must primarily operate within the United States, have at least 50% ownership or control by US citizens or permanent residents, and cannot be more than 50% owned by a single venture capitalist or invent, investment company. The goal of the program is to stimulate technologi technological innovation and meet federal research and development needs. Specifically, we aim to increase private sector commercialization of innovations developed through federal R&D funding. And importantly, to foster and encourage participation in innovation and entrepreneurship by socially and economically disadvantaged persons and women-owned small businesses. So small business grants in many ways are similar to research grants provided by NIH with a few key differences. Small business grants focus on product or service development rather than basic or advanced research. And this leads to outcomes that are product milestones or a launched commercial product rather than a publication or a research goal being met. The projects are as defined pre-commercialization stage but in the application must demonstrate commercial potential. And this is particularly true for phase two applications, which I will explain shortly, that have the requirement of a specific commercialization plan at the time of submission. So there are two categories of small business grants. There are small business technology transfer grants, or STTR grants, and small business innovation research grants, or SBIR grants. These are really the acronyms to remember, STTR and SBIR, when we're thinking about small business grants. And in many ways, they're very similar grant programs with a few key differences. STTRs require a partnership between a small business and a US nonprofit research institution. And the PI can be employed by either the small business or the academic institution. We spend a smaller percentage of our budget on STTR, equaling 0.45%, which at NHGRI equates to $2.2 million annually. For SBIR grants, there is no requirement for funding to be obtained with an academic partner, or the, although it is allowed. And the PI must be employed by the small business. We spend 
a larger percentage, 3.2% of our budget on SBIR grants, equaling 15.4 million at NHGRI. So both SBIR and STTR are what are called phased grant mechanisms. They start with a phase one, which is feasibility and proof of concept. There's no prior data required for a phase one grant. And in the phase one grant, you establish the technical merit, feasibility, and initial commercial potential of your idea. If you have a successful phase one grant, you can apply for a phase two grant, which continues the research and development efforts of your phase one. And funding for a phase two is based off of the results of your phase one and meeting those metrics, the scientific and technical merit of your application, and further demonstration of commercial potential. As I mentioned, there's a requirement of a commercial uh, development plan and a phase two application. The idea is that upon completion of a phase two grant, you'll then move into the commercialization phase, which is often referred to as phase three. We do not fund specifically phase three at NIH, although other federal departments do. The idea being that the company will then move on to the commercialization phase using other forms of investment. And there are a few different paths for which grantees can navigate the small business program. The typical path you see at the top here, which is a phase one, which is anywhere from six months to two years followed by a phase two. So after the completion of your phase one, you submit an application for a phase two that can be one to three years. Or if you believe that you have already demonstrated the phase one work using other funds, you can apply for what's called a direct to phase two grant, which allows you to step directly into the phase two portion of your grant process. Lastly, you can apply for what's called a fast track which combines phases one and two into one single application. The benefit of this being that it minimizes this funding gap between phase one and phase two, where you have to apply for the second phase. The uh, difficulty of this being that you have to have a fully fleshed out plan for phase two upon initial submission, including a commercialization plan. In terms of budgets, the seed office, which is the centralized NIH office I mentioned for small business, has caps on budgets for, for small business grants. However, each institute has a list of topics that they provide waivers for, allowing you to have a slightly higher budget. At NHGRI, our caps are 400K for a phase one and 2.15 million for a phase two. To note, these are total costs across all years of the application. And these are slightly higher, you can see here, than the NIH white caps <laughs> designated by the seed office. In terms of process, things work internally here pretty similarly to research grants. We have a team of program directors that you can see here in our Division of Genome Sciences and Division of Genomic Medicine responsible for different scientific areas within small business. And the grants are reviewed at the Center for Scientific Review using standing, standing stu study sections specific to small business, or at NHGRI if we have targeted funding opportunities. And all of these grants go through a just-in-time process similar to research grants, with one additional step for foreign risk assessment. To expand on this a bit, this foreign risk assessment was part of the SBIR, SBIR and STTR Extension Act of 2022. And this states that all applicants must disclose ties to foreign countries, and they do this through a foreign disclosure form submitted as part of Just in Time. There is a specific NIH counterintelligence office responsible for reviewing these disclosure forms, and this examines whether a small business has uh, ties with specific countries of concern um, that fall into these specific risk criteria. And a grant must get a no risk finding determination in order to be considered for further funding. So to look a little more specifically at NHGRI, we support applications and science and small business in all of the scientific areas across NHGRI that are listed here. This ranges from genomic technology development all the way to ethical, legal, and social implications of genomics. However, I will note, and we'll get into this in a little more detail here shortly, that some of these categories, we tend to see a lot more applications, 
this is based on the nature of the commercialization potential of different categories of genomics. So NHGRI accepts SBIR and STTR grants in all of these supported scientific areas three times a year every year. This is through the omnibus announcements. There are separate announcements for SBIR and STTR with and without clinical trials. We also have a number of notices of special interest in small business or NOCES. I will note that NOCES describe a specific area of interest, but link the applicant back to the omnibus announcement to actually apply. So if you have a project in any of these specific categories, I encourage you to read through the NOCE and get slightly better detail about what NHGRI is interested in these areas. We also have some targeted funding opportunities that are listed here. Um, to start, there is a commercializ commercialization readiness pilot program for existing phase one and phase two grantees, as well as a specific PAR for solutions to enable regional medical e-consult services. And we have recently partnered with NCATS on a PAR to address health inequality, inequalities and in clinical diagnostics tools. And lastly, I want to highlight two new funding opportunities um, that have just come up in 2024. And these are opportunities for new PIs in the small business space. One of these is administered by NCI, and one of them is administered by the centralized seat office. And NHGRI grantees are eligible for both of these funding opportunities. So now I'm going to hand it off to my colleague, Renee Ryder, and she's going to dive into the portfolio in small business here at NHGRI. This is what I think is the exciting part. This is what we've actually funded. And when we did this portfolio analysis, I think it's important to point out the fact that we only looked at applications that we received since um, FY 2020, and we only looked at applications where NHGRI is primary or secondary. And when you're looking at the graphs, those represent numbers. It's not dollars. So a grant for $100,000 is counted as one, just the same as a grant for $500,000. When looking at the number of awarded grants in the SBIR versus STTR program, you can see that STTR only makes up about 17% of our grant portfolio, whereas SBIR makes up 83%. Now, if you remember, Ian said that we are congressionally mandated to spend a certain amount of our budget. Um, but what's interesting about this is that we um, fund 17% of our grants in STTR, but if you look, STTR is 12.5% of our budget. So at first that might look to be a little um, disjointed. But if you think about the grant phases that, and the purpose of the programs, STTR is those grants that are technological um, transfer grants that are partnerships between the universities and the small businesses. So it makes sense that those are the grants that are doing the feasibility studies, which are the phase one grants and have smaller budgets. So that's why the number of grants funded doesn't match the percentage of the budget. Also, if you'll look, we fund more phase one grants in STTR than SBIR. And again, that's because that's where they're doing the research at the universities. You can also, in this um, chart, see that we fund many more phase one grants than phase two grants. Again, that's because phase one is really looking at feasibility. Not all projects are going to be feasible, so fewer go on to phase two. The next thing that we wanted to, to point out is the number of applications that we fund compared to the number of applications we receive. In the past five years, we funded about 22% of the applications that are submitted. It's directly to NHGRI. And that is actually a high proportion of applications when you compare to other institutes. I looked at um, several other institutes that get grants similar, similar to ours. And their funded rates were about 7% on up to 22%. So we are at the high end. So we're a great institute to apply to. Um, the other question that we sometimes get is, is it harder to get an STTR grant since the, the proportion of our budget is so much less? We did look at the funding rates for that also. And about 25% of our STTR grants we do fund. Um, 
SBIR about 22%. Now, before anyone gets the idea that they should definitely go STTR, I did do a chi-squared. This is not statistically um, significantly different. So apply to the program that best fits your project. The other thing um, is that some people think that because we fund 22%, that that is our pay line or the percentile we fund to. These grants don't get percentiles. We don't have a strict pay line. We're just looking for good, good applications. And unfortunately, we really don't get enough applications at NHGRI. They, we are actually having to go out and look at the applications that are submitted to other institutes in order to spend the money that we are congressionally mandated to spend. When looking at the STTR program, we're spending just over half of our budget by um, funding grants that were, up, uh, were um, submitted to other institutes. For SBIR, that's about just under a third. Um, so we, we are always looking for applications. The other thing that we thought was interesting was that um, we looked at our, the scientific areas of NHGRI and then um, tried to figure out where we're spending our money for the, the small business grants. Right now, about 78% of our grants are being um, do are, are related to genomic technology development. About 9% are computational genomics, 9% are genomic medicine, and then 4% is other. And if you go back to that slide that Ian showed you that um, talked about all the different areas that we find, you can see there that the other is really big. But yet we do have grants in all of those areas. Right now I do have one um, grant that's genomic training and education. So we really do want to get um, applications. We did have a very successful NOFO specifically in genomic technology development, which is probably why we see so many there right now. We, and um, so we are trying to work on expanding other areas of our portfolio. If you want to find out more about the grants that we actually are funding right now, I do recommend going to Reporter. That is a place that you can find all of the grants that we have funded and you can see in more detail what we um, have in our portfolio right now. So now that we've talked about our, our grant funding, I do wanna point out that the seed office at NIH, at NIH really does try to support the small businesses through more than just grant funding. They, they provide um, technical and business assistance. They have several different commercialization enhancement programs. They've actually created a series of community hubs that people can go to to get advice. And they also do have supplements to diversify the entrepreneurial workforce. What I'd like to do now is talk about three of these programs just to give you a better idea of the types of assistance that they get. The first one is the technical and business assistance program, and that we call TABA. And that's where grantees can ask for additional funding in the form of TABA assistance to go to third-party vendors. At those third-party vendors, they can request assistance to help them with technical and business concerns. Now, I wanted to just give you an, a list of some examples because that might not, what is a technical concern? These are things like um, maybe they developed a device and they don't know how, you know, these are scientists. They don't know how to um, develop the manufacturing plans. How do we bring that up to scale to have those um, devices that we can market? How do we actually um, sell our product in, a, in a, an efficient manner? So those are the types of questions that you can get answered through TABA. The next one is the i program. The i program is, I think, a really exciting program because it's a hands-on eight-week training that um, these entrepreneurs can go to. It's a separate application process through the seed office. It's no cost to the grantee. It ends up being basically a $55,000 supplement to the small business. We've had a couple of grantees go through this program, and we've been told that it's just an extraordinary experience that they really understand how to run their business after this. The next one that I want to highlight is the company showcase program. Ian talked about the fact that there's um, a phase three at NIH that we really don't support, that that's the, the going forward, how are you gonna commercialize it? How are you going to get investors? This is what the showcase program helps you with. What happens with this program is we have a panel of experts at the NIH who go through all of the, um, 
small business grants to select companies to attend investor and partnering events. And they base their selections on what the company does, what stage of development they're in, and what their fundraising and partnering goals are. Then NIH will tell them that they are selected for this program. If they want to go to it, we provide up to two registrations and a chance to network with investors. And sometimes they even get a chance to pitch to those investors. Two examples of conferences that we've sent people to are the Bio International and the Health Conferences. Now that we've talked about what we've been doing, we wanted to give you an idea of what we um, plan to do with the small business uh, program in the future. The first thing that we're planning on doing is a lot more outreach so that we can get more applications into N to NHGRI specifically. We are having our small business team go to more conferences. We're starting to reach out to the university tech transfer offices. We um, are working with our wonderful Office of Communications to try to do some more webinars, increase our social media presence, and we're updating our website. Um, our program analyst has already been working, Ben has already been working um, to get a listserv so that we can actually have a small business listserv that we can send out announcements. The other thing that we're really working on is to create more companion NOFOs. And what I mean by a companion NOFO is you, um, we recently had the e-consult where we had a U01 for research, and then we had a companion NOFO that small businesses could apply to to create um, solutions to enable e-consults. We've done the same thing in the advancing genomic medicine research and also in the tech dev programs. If you'd like to find out more about the small business program, especially if you want to apply, this is our, um, our website address. You can take a picture of our QR code. And we're always reachable by email at um, our small business email address. And we really did want to thank the many, many people who have been helping with the small business program. Um, they say it takes a village to raise children. It definitely takes a village to raise a small business program. Um, if you have any questions, we'd love to answer them. Nancy. So is it just that each institute does its own, whatever, 3.8% and that, that's how it works? Yep. Uh, I saw um, you don't fund every application that comes to NHGRI, and you end up going to other institutes to look at their applications. So just, just curious, this is probably something you can't quantify, but just impressionistically, are you, do you see uh, applications that don't get funded, s the technology seems to be present, but there's just grantsmanship issues, or, you know, uh, parts of the application missing, things like that. Do, do you think the barrier to getting funded directly by NHGRI for people who apply are more the technology and its readiness or more sort of grantsmanship, et cetera? I kind of want to say yes, <laughs> that it's, it's all of those. Some of the applications, it's because the, um, they are missing the grantsmanship. Um, some of the applications, it's because of you know, the idea wasn't a great idea. Um. Yeah, just to, to add to that, I mean, a situation we see a lot as well is like, there's this uh, requirement, right, for commercialization potential and plan. So often you might get the case of someone who's really experienced with applying for academic research grants that then transitions to doing a small business grant and they might not fully understand or write for kind of the scope of what the program is looking for. And we also do have um, applicants who, there are outside people who will help you with figuring out your commercialization plan and um, really help you through the process. There are some of the other institutes that actually have programs, they have entrepreneurs and residents that can help. So we have, um, many people who apply that second time and do get funded the second time. Now, what do you intend to do to track what comes out of these? Um, uh, if you do fund some of these, is it commercialization? Is it patents, new patents? 
it's, um, it, it depends on what they're doing. Um, some of them it will be commercialization. We do have some people who apply for patents. We don't really have a method right now to track those outcomes. We are um, starting a success, story, a success story project that we are going to be um, really looking at some of our success stories and having them do a video to, to catalog. But to my, both Ian and I are fairly new. I don't think we, we historically have tracked successes. Casey. <clears throat> Hi. Um, so I was I'm wondering about uh, some of the networks that are producing a lot of like software and tools. So a lot of the it seems like it's targeted towards open source. But are there examples where there's been um, like partnerships with business to harden or, and um, and have a pathway towards commercialization for some of those tools? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. I mean, something we're thinking about a lot is uh, small business funding, specifically in this space of kind of informatic tools and computational tools, because there is sort of this, as you mentioned, this uh, push for open source and availability, and how does that fit within the kind of context of commercialization? Um, I don't know if I have a good answer for you of like what the solution is for that. Um, I knew we do, as you saw, we have funded some small businesses in this space um, that have come up with these successful business models. There's obviously a lot of companies in this space, but they tend to not necessarily be applying. So I'm trying to get them to apply more to NHGRI, um, but yeah. Just curious to know whether NIH actually derives income from IP as a result of commercialization. No. No, they they don't. They, they, the 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 IP stays with the the company. Yeah, it's referred to as like non dilutive funds, right? So which is you know grant money that doesn't. Uh, necessitate any sort of ownership or um, IP restrictions on the company. Okay, Ian and Renee, thank you very much. We'll thank move you. along. <clears throat>